the Savior calls, I will answer. When he calls for me, I will hear. When the Savior calls, I will answer. Oh, I'll be somewhere listing for my name. Don't you know that I'll be somewhere listing? I'll be somewhere listing i'll be somewhere listing for my name for my name oh i'll be somewhere listing i'll be somewhere listing i'll be somewhere listing for my name if my heart is right when he calls Calls me if my heart is right, I will hear. If my heart is right, when he calls me, oh, I'll be somewhere listening for my name. Oh, I'll be somewhere listening, I'll be somewhere listing i'll be somewhere listing for my name this for my name. name oh i'll be somewhere yeah. listing i'll be somewhere listing i'll be somewhere listing for my name if my robe if my robe is yes. white when he call calls me yes if my robe is white i will hear if my robe is white when he calls me yes i'll be somewhere listening for my name church don't you know that i'll be somewhere listening i'll be somewhere listening i'll be somewhere listening for my name yes for my my name oh i'll be somewhere listing i'll be somewhere listing i'll be somewhere listing for my name we read in the bible that the christians at berea were more noble than those at thessalonica in that they searched the scripture daily to see if those things were so. And as we are endeavoring to grow and become mature in the Lord, we too need to search the scripture daily because it is a lamp unto our feet and it's a light unto our pathway. The Word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, and God's Word will stand forever. I invite you to turn to 1 Corinthians, the chapter is 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we want to begin with verse number 10. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for examples or examples and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. 
there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. These are some exciting words that I just read. And the tag that I want to put on our lesson tonight is simply this. We are going to make it through the pandemic because God is with us. And it would be appropriate for each individual to say, I am going to make it through, through the pandemic because God is on my side. Amen. This is an exciting lesson. And this pandemic has been with us some two years now. And it's going into the third year. And some congregation have not assembled for two years, going on three. But I thank God that our congregation has been able to assemble a little over a year and a half. And we're going to continue as long as God gives us health and strength. Our theme, church theme, for this year is no pandemic can lock down my soul. And every Christian ought to individualize that theme and make it personal that I'm not going to let any pandemic lock down my soul. And so tonight, the scripture that we have before us was written to the church at Corinth. Corinth, the most important city in Greece during Paul's day. And it was a bustling hub worldwide commerce, a seaport city but it had a degraded culture and it had idolatrous worship. In that city, Paul established a congregation, Acts 18, 1 through 7. And two of his letters are addressed unto the church of God, which is at Corinth. This book proclaims a revelance of Christ to every area of the Christian life. I need to say that again. This book 
the book of 1 Corinthians proclaims the relevance of Christ to every area of the Christian life. When we read in 1 Corinthians 1 30, he has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification. The Christians at Corinth were struggling with their environment, just like we are struggling in our environment. Surrounded by corruption and every conceivable sin, they felt the pressure. Their faith was being tried in the cosmopolitan and the immoral city of Corinth. And some of them were fallen by the wayside. Some were failing the test. Today's pressures make it easy for us to ignore or forget the lessons of the past. But Paul cautioned us to remember the lessons of the Israelites learned about God so we can avoid repeating the error. This is how Paul writes it in 1 Corinthians 10, 11, and 12. Now all these things happen unto them for our examples. We would say today examples. And they're written for our admonition. That is for our warning. For us to do some soul scrutinizing upon whom the ends of the world are come. And then he wrote, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. You can't be too sure about your relationship of Christ. Don't say you'll never do this and you'll never do the other. You don't know what you're going to do when you get under the pressure of sin and various situation. Uh, as you live, have an humble spirit and say with Paul, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. And this is what this lesson is all about. If you and I are going to make it through the pandemic, it is because God is with us. Every child of God should not be over self confident in his spiritual maturity. Because Paul said, to heed, lest you fall. It is easy to substitute confidence in ourselves for confidence in the Lord. 
The Bible says in Proverbs 16 and 18, pride goeth forth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. And whenever God makes a promise, you and I don't have to worry about keeping, about God keeping his promise. A promise is a declaration assuring that one will or will not do something. It's a vow, it's a pledge. And listen what Peter wrote in 2 Peter 3, 9 about God keeping his promise. I tell you, these are some encouraging words. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. Amen and amen. As some men count slackness, but as long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You and I ought to thank God that he is not slack concerning his promise. Whatever God promises, it's going to be done. And we can trust and we can lean on the promises of God Almighty. What a marvelous assurance. It says, uh, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness. See, men will tell you one thing and, and do another. And you can't depend on what men say in so many cases. But that's not the way God is. He's not slack concerning his promise. Whatever God promises, it's going to come to pass. And it doesn't matter how difficult it may be. God told Abraham he's going to have a child. Sarah is going to have a child. Ninety years old. She laughed. She thought it was impossible. But whenever God makes a promise, it'll come to pass. And God will always keep his word. He did it in that case and so many other cases. Numbers 23 and 19 gives us another assurance as to what God will do and will not do. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man. Thank God. Thank God. God is not a man that he should lie. Oh, praise his holy name. Neither the Son of Man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? And it's good to know that God, when he makes a promise, 
He's going to make it good. He's going to keep it. He's, no, he's not going to lie about it. God is not a man that he should lie. Now, all I'm trying to show you uh, in this preliminary introduction that we can trust in the promises of God. And whatever, whatever he said, you and I can lean on it as a rock to help us in stormy weather. Oh, yes. Hebrews 6.18 By two immutable things it is impossible for God to lie. Now sometimes when we are dealing with the promises of God, the situation may look like he's not keeping his promises. But you and I cannot determine when God is going to step in. But there is one thing we ought to know from our study of the Scripture about God that he is an own time God and he's never late. That's why the old lady said about God he may not come when you want him but he's always on time. And in your relationship with God, ah, we can't put him on a 24-hour on a clock because one day when God is as a thousand years and a thousand years with God is as one day, God does not calculate time the way we do. You know why? He made time. He started time. He controls time. And one day, he's going to stop time. And eternity will begin to roll on. And so, trust in the promises of God. Because he cannot lie. Now, we've said all of this to get to the 13th verse of 1 Corinthians 10. Lord have mercy. This particular passage ought to make you shout for joy. Am I going to make it through the pandemic? Well, if God is with you, you're going to make it through it. Amen. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. There have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Lord, have mercy. I don't care what we are going through. Somebody else has already gone through it. It's common to man. And then it says, but God is faithful. That's a sermon by itself. But God is faithful. Man may not be faithful in many instances. Man will let you down when you need him most. But contrastingly, 
God is faithful. In other words, he'll keep his word. He won't let you down. And that's a good thing to know that whatever we are going through, God has given us a promise that no testing that you go through is but common to man. And this pandemic is a Sunday school picnic when you compare it with the persecution that the early church went through in the first century. Oh, the little stuff we have to do. But the church at that time had to go underground, worship incognito. And some were burned at the stake in the open air in the Roman state, uh, stadiums because of their trust in God. Some were fed to the lions because they were children of God. Ah, the horrible things that the first century Christians had to go through will make us gladly accept the pandemic. But God is faithful. Watch what he says now. And I'm, 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 I'm wondering, do you go, are you going to believe this? Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. You know, when I'm going through something in my life, and it is inexplicable, I don't understand all of the ramifications of this particular incident in my life. And when you don't understand all of the things that are, that you don't have the answers for, that's where your faith comes in. That you trust God. And God said in the word that whatever testing I'm having, he will not permit you to, to be tested, Lord Jesus, for something you cannot bear. Oh, Lord Jesus. I don't know how but thank God I know who. I don't know how I'm going to get out the fiery furnace, but I know one thing, I know who. And I'm like those Hebrew boys. God got the power to get me out, and if he doesn't, we still going to trust in him. We're not going to deny him. Ain't it good to know that whatever we're going through, sickness, loss of relatives, loss of your job, suffering, persecution from friends and family, having hardships in your life, and you think that you all alone, you don't have no help. And that's because you don't know what this scripture says. This scripture is the piece of Philemon Yon. State, 
And the late brother Doolin used to say you have to cut it up in fine pieces so you won't choke yourself. Do you believe that God will not let anything happen to you that you're not able to bear? And so when you're having a hard time, start humming. Start singing in your soul. I know the Lord will make a way somehow. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I, I, I don't have any doubt about it. I know the Lord will make a way somehow. And, and as am I going through this pandemic, I don't let what is happening in the world cause me to be afraid because I trust in God who can control any disease. Help me, Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, I do. I trust in a God who can eliminate any uh, infection, any uh, uh, disease in our bodies or in our mind. That's the kind of God we serve. God is able. And so I'm not going to let this pandemic take my joy away. It's not going to take my relationship with God away. Because he said, I won't allow any testing to happen to you that you're not able to bear. Ain't God good? And then it goes on to say, but with the temptation, that is with the testing, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Now, this is the difficult scripture to believe in when you're down and out, when you're having tough times. The God we serve is a deliverer from any kind of times. And I go on with the confidence and faith that God can't lie. Lord have mercy. Now turn to Romans 8.31. Romans 8.31. This is a piece of dynamite. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Ain't that good news? And that's why we said in the subject, we are going to make it through the, the pandemic because God is with us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? If God be for us, it doesn't matter what disease in the world. God knows how to keep his own. Amen. Amen. I 
I hope we believe this. I thank you much. Because if you don't have a faith built on a solid rock, you're going to fall. You won't be able to stand. You won't make it through hard time. You won't make it through a pandemic. But if you got that faith that is built upon a solid rock, oh yes, you're going to make it. And you can start humming when the storms of life are raising. Lord, stand by me. And if you got God on your side, if God be for us, who can be against? The thought I like to label on right now is your temptation is common to man. So many times when Christians are having hard times, they get mad with God. Wow, all of these things happening to me. If it's not one thing, it's another. And life, life has a way of getting you down if you don't know God. If you don't know the scripture, life can blow you away. And you won't feel like getting up you won't feel like doing anything because you have lost all hope. And that's a sad state of affairs for somebody who calls himself a Christian. I know there are different levels of faith as a Christian. The longevity of time and the shortness of time. I know there are different strengths different weaknesses. But there's something we ought to never forget. That if God be for us, who can be against us? He said, our temptation is common to man. Consolation under temptation. It is such common to man, or man can bear it by God's help. Common to man is in the word, in the Greek word, anthropos, and it means that which is human characteristics of or belonging to mankind. In other words, there is no such thing as a superhuman or supernatural temptation. Hello. And some of us got that flip whip. Flip Wilson mentality. The devil made me do it. And the devil made me do it. The devil doesn't have supernatural power to make you sin. We've gotten the, the instruction from God's word that no temptation has taken us 
but such as is common to man. And God is faithful, who will not suffer you or me to be tempted above that which we are able to bear. Common to man. You remember in studying the Bible that even Jesus was tempted in all things as we are but yet without sin. Hebrews 4 and 15. Thank God for Jesus. He went through it all. But the devil couldn't make him sin. Hallelujah. And remember the technique of Jesus. Every time that devil approached him, the Lord responded by saying, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, if Jesus used scripture to put the devil to flight, you and I ought to be able to do the same thing. But you got to know the scripture in order to do it now. Am I right about it? That's why the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of God. 2 Timothy 2.15. And so, The basic meaning of the word temptation is to test or to prove. And, and it does not carry any negative connotation. God tests his people. But he never makes a situation for his people to be in solicitation to evil. And that's why you can't say the, the devil made me do it. God won't set you up. God won't test you and make it impossible for you not to resist evil or sin. Amen. Now I'm getting into some heavy stuff that some folks don't believe because they, 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 they believe more of Mama Lucy and, 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 and the uh, fortune teller and help me Jesus and all this superstition, all of this baggage that they brought from uh, the world and denominational churches, and they have not been uh, properly uh, taught that they could get rid of this stuff. And this stuff of the baggage is causing them to, to doubt God. But we don't ever want to doubt God for it is impossible for God to lie. James 1.13. James Let no man say when he's tempted, I am tempted of God. 
For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. God won't set you up. Ain't that good news? God won't put you in a situation where he's testing you that you are not able to bear and that he won't make a way to escape. And sometimes, sometimes life gets so tough that uh, we can't believe what the Bible says. But if you trust in God, whatever your situation may be, uh, you'll be able to make it through. Why are we tested? Why do we have to go through stuff in life? As the man said, why is my race so hard to run? Turn over to James chapter 1 and verse 2. And there is an answer in the word of God. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations. That's good news. Count it all joy when you fall into divers, not not just one temptation, but many temptations. Why can you count it all joy? Because the Lord will make a way somehow. During this pandemic, there are many things we don't understand. There are many adjustments that we have to make to stay alive. And when the hospitals are locked down, it's tough. For you as an individual, sometimes you may not be able to get in. People are lined up in, in the hallway and in the emergency room because there's no room for them in the hospital. And when you got your loved one in the hospital, you can't even visit your, your loved one. I mean, that's tough. In times like these, that's when the Word of God comes in and helps us to stabilize ourselves and not go crazy. I'm not going to let no pandemic cause me to lose my mind. Because if I lose my mind, I won't be trusting in God. Hello? And so our subject is, I'm going to make it through the pandemic because God is with me. And I know that with God, all things are possible. Don't you let nobody lock down your soul. Continue to study God's Word. And there are nuggets and scriptures to help us 
in an uncertain time, in pandemic times, in hard times, when you know God and you know how he loves his people and God will take care of us no matter what has what is happening to us. Oh, mercy, Lord. Count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. Every one of us must face time, places, and circumstances that will test our faithfulness to God. And anything which tries to pull you away from the, your loyalty to God is a temptation. I'd like to close with uh, Job 23 and 10. If anybody had to go through a pandemic, it was Job. I mean, we haven't seen anything like Job's situation. But Job said, in Job 23 and 10, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, oh Jesus, I shall come forth as gold. I want to be like Job. What about you? When he tried me, going through the fire of purification, I shall come forth as gold. So whatever we're going through, remember the first point. Our temptation is common to man. And next week we'll talk about, but God is faithful. That, that, that's a sermon by itself. God is faithful. And because we can depend upon the fidelity of God Almighty, we know that everything is going to be all right. And so we don't fear what man can do unto us, but rather we fear what God will do if we end up losing our soul. And so whatever your situation is, remember 1 Corinthians 10:13. Mark it in your Bible. Memorize it. Talk about it. Discuss it. And it'll bless your soul. If you're here tonight and you're not a Christian, you need to become a Christian. Jesus put it in these graphic words. John 3 three and five, except a man is born again, he cannot even see the kingdom of heaven. You got to be born again. And how does a man born again? Five simple things he must do. He has to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
And that's a marvelous gospel to hear. The death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He died in our place, and he died for our sin. And only the blood of Jesus can wash our sins away. We believe it, John 8, 24, except you believe that I am he. You'll die in your sins. And if you die in your sins, the Lord said what I am. You cannot come. Repent of your sins. Luke 13, 3 and 5. I tell you, nay, except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And then confess with your mouth that Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the Living God, Acts 8 37. And after that noble confession, you're ready to be buried in water, baptism, for the remission of your sins. Acts 8, or rather, Acts 2 Acts 2 38. And he will wash your sins away. Acts 22, 16. And then he will add you to the church of Christ. Acts 2, 47. And then you can start on your Christian journey following the Lord, trusting in his promises and having help to bear anything that you face in life when you're standing on the promises of God. If you're here tonight and you are a child of God, stand in need in the need of prayer or restoration, you too are invited to come. Won't you come? as we stand and sing the invitation.